Welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, we're so excited to, for you to be here. We don't take this lightly. There are countless of places you could have chosen to be at this very moment, but you choose. It's a choice to spend time here in the presence of God. And we love and we honor you. I want to say thank you to the worship team. Um, you guys not only sing with the heart of God, but you are an example of how we should worship because you worship with your, your mind, your will, and your emotions. So you give it all to God. And so we thank you for that. I want to say thank you to the Usher staff. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, I, 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 n there's no uh, position that's more important than the other. We're all one body. And so the simple kind gestures, the greeting, the smile, the introduction is a beautiful thing. You don't know what someone is experiencing, but simply that smile could change the whole climate in a person's life. So we don't take that lightly. So we thank you. We want to say thank you to the leadership. Uh, Pastor T, Sarah Roberts. Um, I'll tell you a quick story. When we were, when we were in the old church, uh, I lost my father. And the first person I went to, I called PT. And um, we met at church, and he prayed for me. And on the plane ride home to the Bahamas, I've never felt such peace in my life simply because he uh, interrupted his time to come see about me. And so uh, in that moment, uh, I really understood um, what it meant, uh, the power of prayer, and what it means to be present uh, with God. So I say thank you to the leadership. We love you and we honor you. I want to say hi to everyone on live stream, uh, all over the world watching. Um, we hope someday that you would come in physically and be a part of our service. But until then, we thank you. We love you and we honor you and keep watching. <laughs> Today's uh, topic is something that I've been, uh, it's been on my heart heavy for the last three months. And the topic simply is the art of forgiveness in spite of the apology. The art of forgiveness in spite of the apology. See, um, it's Christmas time is coming up. And all of the retail chains, they're sparing no expenses on commercial ads and breaking out all the stuff. They're telling us what our parents and loved ones will want the most without meeting us or having a conversation with us. And every year the cycle repeats itself. You know, we accumulate a lot of stuff and we smile at the gifts and we laugh at it. But in the end, we're not giving our families anything to build memories on. So they open up the gifts and a year later everything is discarded and we say that we love God and we're celebrating his birthday but Christ is not invited. He's not invited simply because we're not exhibiting the Spirit of God. Because we've reduced Christmas, which means more Christ, but we've reduced it to retail chains and for best bargain prices and, and mechanical devices, and we forgot the original reason on why Christ came. So we're celebrating his birthday, but he's not invited. So what if, what if we're still going to give the gifts, because I don't want you to, anyone to rise up and kill you. We're, st <laughs> we're still going to give the gifts, but what if after they've gotten the gifts and they're overwhelmed by how it looks and, and what it does and how it functions, what if I want to say to you that I forgive you. 
I forgive you for what you did to me a long time ago, and I've been masking it by buying you a lot of things, but in the end, I'm not exhibiting the true spirit of God. So this time, I'm, good, I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna open up my heart, and I'm gonna simply give you my forgiveness, because forgiveness is simply an act of love. But we've watered down the version of forgiveness because if you look up in the Webster's Dictionary, it says simply to stop anger. But that's not the definition of forgiveness. Can we put up the slides that explains forgiveness, please? <clears throat> it says the definition of forgiveness, the first one is an act of love. So when you're making a decision to forgive someone, it's simply an act of love. It says to re resist revenge, resisting revenge. So simply because you've hurt me, it doesn't give me the right to turn around and give revenge back to you. See, I'm learning that forgiveness, love, courage, humility, all of these are God products. And if we are God's children, we can't operate without the principles. So it's like a seed. The, sun, the seed needs soil, it needs water, it needs moisture. These are all the principles in order for the seed to grow. But we're deciding to live and say we're following God and his purpose. But we're ignoring some of the principles in order for us to function at our highest capabilities. But what if we made a decision and we said, today, I'm going to exhibit the spirit of God. I'm going to walk in forgiveness. And I'm not going to wait for the feeling to come before I give my forgiveness. It says, to wipe the slate clean. We said forgiveness, we say forgiveness is, oh, I've forgiven you. But every single time you remember it, then you give them hell again. But that's not wiping the slate clean. Jesus said, for your sake, I take no memory of these things. So if you made a decision and you confess with your mouth, said, I forgive you. But then every time that feeling or that thought comes up, you chastise and you you give them hell, it means that you're charging an innocent man because you've already given your forgiveness. You've already moved on. You've already forgiven him. Now you're taking your forgiveness back because every time that feeling comes up, you let them know how you feel. But forgiveness is not about feelings. Forgiveness has nothing to do with feelings because if it did, God said before Adam fell and sent a built-in protection, God had a counsel with himself and before. So if he knew mankind was going to fail, consistently fail, consistently fail, ask for forgiveness, ask for forgiveness, if it was based on the feeling, we would not be here. But God is simply saying, I forgive simply because it's my culture. It's not a feeling. This is how I operate as my highest function. Because if I choose to hold on to the bargaining chips of you and the dysfunction of you, I'm going to judge you according to your dysfunction. But what if we made a choice to wipe the slate clean? It says, seeking reconciliation. I know wholeheartedly the reason for the calamity in the earth is because the missing presence of the Father. It's the missing presence of the Father. So, what causes the Father not to reconcile with the child? And what causes the child, who is now an adult, not to seek reconciliation to the Father? It is simply unforgiveness. I'm going to let you know how much this hurts. 
And I'm not minimizing anyone's pain or resentment or anything they've experienced in their lives, but I'm telling you that in order for us to fully function, we have to wipe the slate clean. Can we go to Mark 2, please? And, ag and again, he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was, and he, again, he entered Capernaum and some days, and it was heard that he was at the house. Immediately, many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them not even near the door, and he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him, because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was, and so when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. So here it is. They know that Jesus was coming, and they couldn't get through the doors. They couldn't even get near the house because there were so many people. So these four men, it obviously it wasn't their house, but they took the roof off because they were so sold out for the fact of what they knew Jesus would do. They were so convinced. Their faith was so to the next level, that they took the roof of someone's house and they lowered this paralytic man in. And when he came down, imagine the spectacle, the house is filled with nothing but people. And so to their amazement, this figure is coming down. And Jesus said, when, when he saw their faith, he said to the paralytic son, he said, son, your sins are forgiven. Here it is, this man is paralyzed. Obviously his legs are deformed. But Jesus is saying, son, your sins are forgiven. Automatically, everyone in the house is confused because they're seeing the obvious need that this man has. But Jesus is seeing something completely different. So it says, and some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. So these are the, the lawgivers, the, the guys who are so skilled in, 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 in the law and the scribes. And they're saying, what is this man talking about? Why does this man speak blasphemy like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they they reasoned thus within themselves. He said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or say, arise, take up your bed and walk? Is it possible, I'm just asking a question, is it possible that his most immediate need was not him walking? What if, what if the position in which he laid was because of his unforgiveness? Jesus is saying, I'm going to trust Jesus rather than the scribes. Jesus is saying, this is the most immediate need is, son, your sins are forgiven. Son, your sins are forgiven. But that you may know the Son of Man has power on the earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he arose, looked up, to the, looked up, took up his bed, and went out in the presence of all of them, and so that all were amazed and glorified God saying, we've never saw anything like this. So obviously he did heal him in the end. But God 
never does anything. Everything he does is with an intention. God is telling us that the crisis in your life, the lack of bills, the bills in your life that are piling up, the pain in your leg, the noise around you, the dysfunctional relationships, these are not your immediate need. Your immediate need is unforgiveness. What if the thing that you go to God the most about, what if all it took was you forgiving all of the things you haven't forgiven before? What if this is what God is suggesting with the paralytic? He is saying your sins are forgiven. So the immediate need was simply you need to know that I have forgiven you. Be free. And then he took, he said, took your bed and go to your house. Now the reason why he's saying that is because is it possible that the paralytic made his money because of his deformity? And if he's saying, take up your bed, meaning I don't want to see you back here in the streets, take your bed and go back to your house. This is what Jesus is saying. He is saying, you are free. You are no longer bound and chained by the burdens of your life. I've taken them. Take up your bed and walk and go to your house. Can we put up the slide that, that lists all of the dangers of unforgiveness? The danger of unforgiveness, anger. The danger of unforgiveness, anger. When you don't have, when you haven't forgiven, it means that you're holding on to something. And if you're holding on to something, it literally shows up in your disposition. So there's anger. There's sickness. Because sickness, because you're holding on to that stress and holding on to all of the things that have happened to you, now all of a sudden your immune system is breaking down because we're not meant to carry all of that excess baggage. And so a tumor is simply an overgrown cell that has grown too fast. And nothing could be more depressing than coming home. So we got two people in the house and they walk by each other in the hallway and there's no love, there's no feeling, simply because neither one has the courage to say, I forgive you. Can we sit down and talk about this? God said, I need to exhibit all of his principles in order for me to function at my highest capabilities. And if that's the case, why am I choosing, because it's a choice, why am I choosing to hold on to this anger? And it's costing me. It's robbing me of my freedom. It's robbing me of my health. It's robbing me of my finances. It's robbing me of my relationships. So I have depression on my life. I'm unavailable to be used by God because there's another residence that have taken up host in your heart. So you can't be used simply because you have unforgiveness. And in that unforgiveness, there's broken relationships. And because of the broken relationship, life becomes an experiment and we put foreign substance in our bodies. It's not a coincidence. The minute you decide, the minute you decide not to forgive, it's a slow, steady pace down to nowhere. And who taught us? Who taught us not to forgive? Who taught us that we got to wait for the feeling to come back? Because we grow up in homes where, as a little child, they would tell us, Oh, he did this to me. Tell him you're sorry. Tell him you're sorry. And now, 
okay, now I could forgive you. So we learn from the age from zero to five that you can't give forgiveness until there is an apology. So we marinate in the spirit of this thing where it has to be one and then the other. And now we're an adult, no longer with childish toys, but still we function in that same disposition. I'm waiting for the apology. And in the meantime, there's sickness. And in the meantime, there's sickness, there's anger, there's depression, unavailability, broken relationships. Life becomes an experiment and we're still waiting for the apology. What if, I'm simply asking a question, what if we decide to go before the apology? Because forgiveness is simply saying I forgo the right to hurt you because you've hurt me. I forgo the right to hurt you because you've hurt me. So we need to make a decision for ourselves. Forgiveness is not necessarily for the other person. It's for ourselves. Because when we decide to forgive, we're releasing ourselves from this toxic relationship. But the culture is saying, no, that's not the way it works. We're following a king and his kingdom but we're taking the advice of a culture that is literally killing itself. It is literally killing itself. God saying, these are my products. And in order for you to work, you have to function with my products and my principles. So it is your culture. To give forgiveness, not waiting for the apology. Simply because this human being has the image and I have to do it simply because I'm a child of God. It is that simple. And when we take the emotions, the concerns, the judgment, because when we say I'm not going to forgive you, we have become the judge. We are saying, God, you're not going to judge him accordingly the way I would. So I'm not going to give the apology. But what if, what if we decide to become adults in the kingdom? What if we decide to become adults in the kingdom and I say, I am simply going to decide. I don't care what my mother did. I don't care what my father did. I don't care what my ex did. I'm going to simply decide to love. Because forgiveness is an act of love. We owe it to each other to forgive. And what if the reason for all the calamity in the earth, the violence, the rage, is simply because the household in which they marinated in, there was no forgiveness. Can we go to another scripture, please, Matthew? Should you, not all, should you not also have compassion on your fellow servant? Just I had pity on you. Keep going. Okay, let's start from the top of it, please. And his master was angry and, no, sorry, let's go to the top, the top of it, please. Should you not also have compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the tortures until he should pay all of that that was due to him. This story is basically tells of they asked Jesus, how much time should you forgive someone? And, and, and Paul says, seven. And then Jesus says, no, seven times 70. And um, Jesus is saying, he gave him a parable. He's saying the kingdom of heaven is like a master who have come to collect his debt. And this servant has accumulated tens of thousands of talents 
and he is getting ready to sell his his wife and kids and everything and and the servant begs for mercy and then the master says okay I will wipe your debt clean and as he leaves and goes into the village he sees someone who owed him <laughs> he sees someone who had another servant who had owed him much less and he said pay me what you owe me and he took the man and choked him and then he had the man put in jail simply because the man had didn't have the means to pay and so when the servants saw this and they went back to the master and they told the master what this servant had done he brought the servant back to him and he said didn't I not have mercy on you why would you do this to this other servant and so he took everything that he had all of the things that he had garnered and he said I'm gonna put you in prison until you can pay it all off so here's the moral of the story the moral of the story is God is saying I am forgiving you even before you ask but why can't you do that for your brothers and sisters when your the price that you have cost is more than your brothers why are you not willing to pay the price this is we got to get to a place of unforgiveness of forgiveness we got to forgive we got to forgive it is our culture to do so it's an act of love can we go to the other slide please these are all the benefits of forgiveness love you have the freedom now to love you have the freedom to be present simply because love coincides with forgiveness and it simply means that I am available to be loved in spite of what you might do simply because I know that I have the capability to forgive you and your flaws I'll say that again love is suggesting that I am ready to take someone on simply because I know that my father will allow me to forgive you in spite of everything you may do so I have the confidence to love you freedom I have the freedom to love because I'm not tied and burdened down by my unforgiveness and past ex-boyfriends and ex-girlfriends and what my my cousin did and what my father did humility it takes humility to give forgiveness and in order for us to give humility we have to put ourselves lower than the other person because humility simply means I'm willing to meet you more than halfway in order to meet the demands of what we need to do in order to make this right testimony we cannot have a testimony if we don't have forgiveness here, listen, look at all the things that we are robbing ourselves of if we choose not to forgive. Availability. I'm available now for God to use me because my, channel, my channels are clear. I have no reason not to trust, not to be obedient, not to, to be focused and present on what God wants for me. Healthy relationships. At the drop of the hat, I'm ready to forgive you and let's move on. It has nothing to do with the feeling. We're waiting for the feeling to come and God is saying, I didn't do that with you. Why are you waiting for the feeling? <laughs> I, did not, I didn't wait for the feeling for you. I forgave you even as he was coming down. Jesus said, son, your sins are forgiven. The man didn't even open his mouth yet. He never even asked for forgiveness but Jesus knew that was the most immediate crisis in his life and he gave it to him so Jesus is saying I am the example so if my brother is malfunctioning I have to give the immediate need in which he needs in order to set him free and what if that's on what if that's forgiveness what if that's forgiveness purpose manifest in, in faith 
purpose manifests in the earth, rather. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm free to do God's will. I am free to do God's will. We got to take this thing and seize it simply because the world is waiting for us to be the solution. And we can't be home bogged down in our emotions. The world is waiting for us to rise up and change. <laughs> And if they're waiting on us, what if the Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish? They didn't say where there is no collective vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. And because I'm stuck in my unforgiveness, I have no vision for my life. So my life is an experiment. But there are thousands of people waiting for you to get it together so we could be free. What if Mother Teresa decided that I was going to stay in my emotions? What if Martin Luther King decided to stay in his emotions? What if Mandela decided to stay in his emotions? This man was in prison for 27 years. And when he came out, he automatically forgave the people that put him there. Because in the end, it was not about the feeling, it's about the reconciliation so our country could come together. And the only way our country was going to come together if I sh showed the reconciliation between this party and mind. He didn't wait for the feeling to come back. 27 years of his life. 27 years of his life. Jesus on the way to the cross. They were whipping him, spat on him, chastising him and calling all these names. And on the way and when he got there, he said, Father, forgive them. He said, Father, forgive them because they know not what they have done. Is it possible that the people that have wronged us didn't know the extent in which they were doing? Wow. See, because we're all, if we're not walking in forgiveness, humility, and love, courage to do so, there are parts of our life that is going to become an experiment. So we're going to hurt our loved ones unknowingly. But what if that human being had a built-in safety net? I'm going to forgive you until you get to the better side of yourself. <laughs> what if love is not a feeling? Forgiveness is not a feeling. Everything is based on a decision. Father said, forgive them for they know not what they have done. He didn't look to them. He looked upward. He said, Father, forgive them because they know not what they have done. We have to walk in the presence of forgiveness, love, humility, courage. And we can't do them separately. They all have to come along together. Love comes with courage, humility, forgiveness, so does humility. They all are intertwined. These are all God products, and we can't do one without the other. It takes courage to love. We have to have forgiveness in order to love. We have to have the humility to see beyond our pride and ego. And what if that is the simple difference that is simply going to turn this whole thing around? Because because we haven't tried it. The minute someone does something to us, we automatically want to rise up and create revenge. But what if all of the noise, the police brutality, the judgments, the George Simmons, what if we ignored the airwaves and we said, I'm going to skillfully love both sides? Because love liberates. 
Love liberates. I'm going to allow the court system to do their side, but I'm going to skillfully love both sides because God said, I have no judgment. My job is to work within the principle. And the principle is to love both sides in spite of their malfunctioning. But it takes, in order for us to do that, we have to walk in the power of God. We got to spend more time with God, getting filled up from God. So we don't fall to the prey of our emotions. I can't trust my emotions. I cannot trust my emotions because I'm not integrated. In order for you to be completely walking with God, my mind, will, and emotions have to be one. And sometimes I'm not one because the culture is pulling me another way and God is pulling me the other. So my mind, my will, and emotions are not one. So in order for me to make the correct decision, my whole being has to be sold out about what God wants to do and how he wants to do it. We have to walk in humility. We have to walk in forgiveness. We have to walk in love and the courage to do so. And the only way we're going to do that is simply by spending more time with our Father. What if that's all it took? Simply to spend more time with our Father. Tonight, we're going to make a decision to simply walk in the culture of nothing but forgiveness. And we don't wait for the apology. Kingdom citizens don't wait for the apology. We simply say, I forgive you. What if all of these strange relationships, what if instead of ignoring your brothers and sisters, you walk up to this brother here. Eric has been through so much with his family and the loss of his brother and all of the calamity that's going on. But this brother has nothing but love in his heart in spite of in spite of all of the things that he is experiencing he has nothing but love in his heart and I celebrate you brother I celebrate you and I love you and in this time we need brothers to love each other more than ever and I'm telling you for the rest of my life I will be sold out about seeing about you I love you. What if, what if we decide to have the courage to love? I know I'm macho. I know I have an ego. But let's get to the love. At some point, we're going to have to get there. So can you stand with me, please? Can you repeat after me? Father God, I thank you for your love. I thank you for the God products you've given us. We can't operate them without you. Please show us how to walk in forgiveness, humility, love, courage, Understanding. I belong to you. And if I belong to you, you know exactly how I work. Teach me in my private time how to love better, how to forgive quicker, how to respond faster. I love you. And I need to be free in order to love others. Cleanse my heart tonight. Take away my concerns. Take away my worries. My frustrations. All of the pain of the past. All of the people that have done me wrong. I forgive them. I may not feel like it. But it has nothing to do with the feeling. I forgive them. My God.
we're not going to take this lightly. I simply want to say to you, those of you who are dealing with the tension of unforgiveness, and you know you need to release it, not for the other person, but you need to release it for yourself in order to be free and to walk in the power and everything God has given you. And if you want to release that tonight, can you come down for me, please? Can you just come down? Those of you that need the apology, you need the apology, so you're waiting on the apology in order to make things right. What if, what if you ignored the apology? What if you ignored the apology and the next time you see that someone, that image of God, you simply say, I forgive you, brother. I forgive you, sister. I forgive you, father. I forgive you, mother. I have no right to hold resentment towards you. And if this is touching your heart, can you please come down for me, please? Can you? We can go any further with this baggage, excess baggage holding us down. We can't go any further. I know this by example. We can't go any further. We have to move. Love is an action word. You can't say I love someone and stand still. So let's move in the area of forgiveness. Let's move in the area of humility. Those of you who have strayed away, you know what the forgiveness of God feels like. You've walked in the power of his forgiveness. But circumstances and certain situations have caused us to stray away. But it's time to come back to the atmosphere of God. And that's you. Can you please come down for me, please? Can you please come down? We got to love better, guys. I, I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. We got to love better. We're destroying each other and we don't even know why. Simply because we don't have the original information concerning our lives. We got to walk in forgiveness. It's a choice. It's going to free you. I guarantee you, you're going to feel much lighter. You're going to get more work done. You're going to love better. You're going to have richer relationships. Everything is going to increase when you simply make one decision. I'm going to decide. Thank you. Come down, brother. Thank you. (laughs) We can't do this by ourselves, guys. We can't do this by ourselves. We need each other. We need each other. We need to share the love of God in our lives because the way God reveals himself to me is different from the way he does to Pierre. And when Pierre tells me how God has introduced himself in his life, it gives me more weapons to love more. So we got to share the love of God because he's going to introduce himself in all kind of different ways and we're going to be benefited for it so can you close your eyes and pray with me please? put your hands over your heart please mm. father God can you repeat after me please father God 
I thank you for your love. I thank you for giving me vital, loving, functioning, a generous heart. I want to do your will. Increase me. I want to walk in more forgiveness. I'm not settled by the bit of love that I'm giving. I know that I could be better. And I will be better. I love you. I thank you for loving me perfectly. And I'm going to make that decision to do that to my brothers and sisters simply because they deserve it has nothing to do with feelings has nothing to do with emotions but I am going to choose to love choose to forgive choose to walk in humility because it's my culture to do so So I'm wiping away all of the reasons why I shouldn't. Because I have no reasons. If I am following you, then you are my reason. I thank you for your love. I thank you for protecting me. I thank you for keeping my family safe. I thank you for health and strength. All of the things that we take for granted. This day, I, am, I choose to be better. And I'm going to be more appreciative of everything you've given me. And I'm going to be your foot soldier in the earth. And my love is going to be so radical. It's going to change the climate. So get ready. I love you. And I'm sold out for you. And we seal this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.